Today's interview is with Ryan Rose Evans. Um, you Hopefully you're following him on Instagram, guys. I really, really love the content that he's putting out. His Instagram handle is at Ryan Rose Evans. Um, he caught my eye because many of you know, I did a bodybuilding experience recently and have just kind of been processing all that. And then I saw some posts from him, um, where he was, you know, talking about his experience during the time that he was bodybuilding. And now he's leaned more into holistic health coaching. Um, he works specifically with healing the gut by healing trauma and stress that's created from it. Um, and really more it's into the spiritual realm of things. I just so appreciate his posts. Um, I was showing one of my daughter and she's like, I feel like you wrote this. <laughs> so just very, very aligned. It's such a great conversation. Um, I love his, his bio that he gave me he says he's just a guy that shares what he has learned from his experience so far. Um, from functional health, microbiology, psychotherapy, and trauma, and searching for the root cause to a more wholesome life. Um, he has some really, really great insights. Like I just love his perspective on, on healing. Um, I hear a lot of notes of self-compassion and self-understanding and going inside of yourself to heal. Um, wow. Like he mentions his experience with fecal transplant. I don't know if you guys have learned about that, but wow. Was a, I was quite shocked when he shared that um, experience and, um, talks about his own struggles with mental health and recovering from addiction and being able to heal and being in a more empowered space and, and being okay with whatever emotions he's experiencing. Oh man, do we need more of that talk? Um, so anyway, I know you guys are going to love this episode. It's very like heartwarming. Um, and you can find him again on Instagram as Ryan Rose Evans and his website is Ryan holistic coaching.com. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Here is Ryan Rose Evans. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults and their nanoparticle size minerals. So, um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about higher coaching. This is my coaching system and I get a lot of questions because, um, it's not just training and nutrition. We do that. I love training and nutrition, obviously, but we also do more. We do personal development and the way that's delivered is a 90 day personal development program that you go through with me when you work with me. So it's a video course with questions for you to deep dive in yourself for the first 90 days of working with me. Now that comes as part of a morning routine. I am really big on the morning routine and you ask any of my clients, I will push you on that because it's life changing. So we start with meditation and then we do gratitude and then that personal development program. Um, that's our deep dive psychologically. And after the 90 days, you go to the next level, you start doing what I'm doing currently. And it's a lot of strategic goal setting and it's really, really honestly, miraculous what's happening, not only in my life, but in my clients' lives. Like it brings me to tears when I get on calls with them. I'm like, do you see yourself? Like, do you see what you're doing? That is so cool. So anyway, that is um, for me, the bread and butter of my coaching. I love it so much. Um, 
also though, in, in regards to your body, I also like to go deep dive and see what might be holding you back. So that's where all the biohacking side comes in. We do a physiological deep dive as well. So we do blood testing, hair mineral testing, DNA testing, body composition, aura ring. Um, so your heart rate variability, your sleep cycles. Do you have any deficiencies? Do you have issues with sleep you didn't even know about? Let's find out, you know? Um, so that's, that's how I approach things in higher. There's more, we do prizes every month, Nikes, Lulu's, um, all my favorite products and foods to keep you motivated, to keep those habits up. We do three zoom calls a week. So you get support. We have a private Facebook group. We're all vibing and, and cheering each other along the way. We get raw and real and honest. And it's just, yeah, it's like, I created my life and I created my life the way I like and I like to deep dive with a bunch of bad A people that really want to optimize their lives and it's an honor for me to serve them in that. Um, so I just thought I would tell you about it because I don't know if I talk about it quite enough. So if you're looking for that, if you're like wanting the next level in your body and also in your life, truly, that's what we're doing. So. Uh, seeking bad A's <laughs> to join higher. I do have some spots open. Um, it is limited. I can only handle so many clients at a time, but if you would like to find out if it's a good fit for you, you can go to my website, taragarrison.com and you can request a call and we can see if, if it's a great fit for you. Um, and yeah, I, I just wanted to tell you guys about higher so you could get a little glimpse into what I'm doing on the daily. And if you're looking for something a little more self-guided, I do have my keto in and out program, um, on my website. Site. So you can either do a small taste and try it for eight weeks, or you can go a full year. That baby is comprehensive. There is a video of every recipe, video of every exercise. There's a 60 day course teaching you how to do keto or 30 days of keto. And then 30 days of bringing back the carbs, FAQ video library, Facebook group, like all of that. So if you're more of like the self guided person and you just want stuff planned for you, um, that is also an option on my website. It's taragarrison.com. I'll link it all in the show notes and all right, we'll go ahead and get into our episode. All right. So Ryan, I'm really excited. I like, I actually really tapped in before we started and I was like, I can tell that we're on very similar missions of what we're trying to help get awareness about out and like, and help people with. And so I was asking, and I really felt like we should start this talking about your own healing journey. Um, I know I can see that you're very much into blending the spiritual and science, the chemical and the, you know, trauma based emotional body and all that stuff of coming to a place of healing. So I just wanted to find out your personal journey, first of all, and like what got you to this place, you know, like what, what have you gone through in your life that led you up until this point? Hmm. Well, Tara, um, that's a big loaded question because that mm -hmm. could go on for that could go on I for know. about five episodes, I'm sure, right? Um, I know. <laughs> but I guess I was a guy um, that lived in a very rough uh, neighborhood, as you would call it, over in the U.S. And it was a struggle trying to find myself in, a, in a, a household that were very busy doing their own thing and dealing with their own stuff, mm -hmm. to put it lightly. And I had to find who I was and I could only find that through external sources. So I got into bodybuilding, martial arts, uh, boxing, strongman, everything known to man that I could do to feel that validation and that worth from me that, that personal development and growth from those activities really um, developed my personality for a period of time. Um, I got really bad into drugs. Um, addictions were really big uh, for me as the later part of my the later part of that life. I like to say. Um, and then my mother got ill, and loads of things happened all at once. And I had this all this experience in dietetics and microbiology, but my mum was still ill and all the science in the world wasn't able to give her all the answers. So me looking into Eastern philosophies and some of those things really helped me help with my mum and see her heal through emotional stuff as well as science. And that's what opened up the curiosity box for me to really delving into mixing all of these together. Mm. 
Mm. Okay. And so you're, and I can relate my mom's on hospice right now and it's tough Mm. because Mm. it's like, as a, you know, I guess sort of healer and health coach, it's like, Oh, I have all these resources and that eventually you have to surrender to Mm. life and nature and Mm. just accept, you know, that that's, that's her path. Um, I, I, I actually had a big, very beautiful meditation with that. And it was just like, it was, I like how my, um, higher self or guides or whatever this is that's leading me teaches me. And it was like, Hey, it's sassy. Sometimes it's like, it's like, Hey, do you like your magical journey that you're on and your path? Do you believe that this is all, you know, with purpose? So why are you trying <laughs> to block hers? And I was like, Oh, it like snapped me right out of my crap. So. <laughs> but I, but I feel that, you know, it's it, in, it's beautiful that in a way it, it taught you many things that you're now, now able to help others with. It kind of like honors her legacy. You know what I mean? By being able to bring that beauty that you learned through that suffering Mm -hmm. to other people. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay. Help us connect the dots. So here you are, you're, you've got tons of trauma, tons of pain. Um, you've learned some things you've you're, you know, but you have a drug addiction. Like, where does it go from there? Mm. Firstly, I'll say that my mum's okay now. She is okay. So my, my mum recovered. Yeah. So Damn. my mum got bowel, my mum got bowel cancer, and then she had chemo and stuff, and then mm. she worked through some emotional bits, and she's okay now. She's free wow. four years clear. So, wow. Yeah, so, just, so do you feel that's like what, the... that's what developed the curiosity for me because I saw that change. Ah, wow. Okay. So you do you feel like a lot of her. Um, uh, physical stuff suffering was rooted in emotional suffering. One hundred percent. I don't think I, I, I work with people with chronic conditions, uh, really in a bad way, stage mm. four cancers and all sorts. Mm. And I've never seen ninety five percent of them have un, unresolved emotional wounds or mm-hmm. baggage that they've not looked at or even peeked mm-hmm. into because mm-hmm. it's too much for them, mm-hmm. and they they sort of suppress that down. So I've never really seen anyone really the five percent might be environmental and other factors and mm-hmm. dietary stuff but that 95 mm-hmm. percent mostly emotional stuff especially with chronic conditions like that so, i'm yeah. i'm curious on that note i'm curious like um what your approach is when people because a lot of trauma is that way like um you know i've even seen like disassociation and all sorts of things happen when people are trying to deal with trauma. So like, um, Mm. how do you, you know, what would you say to somebody? It's like, I know I have trauma and there's no freaking way I'm going there. You know, like how do you gently guide someone Mm. into the processing space? Yeah. What a beautiful question. I guess when people come to me the first time that when they first talk to me, they say, I don't have any trauma. Uh, I grew up in a great home and everything. And not everyone does have trauma. Some people have been brought up in a really conscious family um, where their needs were met and they were seen, they were heard, they were held, they had the space to be their authentic self. But it's just very rare and I don't come across it. And by the time people are coming to me, they normally do have some form of challenge and obstacles that they're working through. Mm-hmm. So I, I also, to... on that note, real quick, I'll say though, don't you feel like, I feel like trauma is relative because you, I, sometimes I have those people and they're like, I was born in this great family, but then some girl rejected them in the third grade. And ever since then they've had this like low self-esteem. No one's ever going to like me. You know what I mean? So sometimes it can be a little yeah, well, relative. Like if that, if you're not used to trauma <laughs> and then something like that happens, it can really set you onto a crazy course, you know? 100 yeah 100 and it is so relative completely like um me not being seen because my parents are doing stuff when Mm -hmm. you not being seen will be completely different in our own perceptive reality right yeah and how our reality is created is based on our perception of that so it's just this constant of course it's relative so most of the time people do come to me and they've got this Um, stuff going on in the background there's lots of shadow stuff going on Mm -hmm. and I guess most of the time I feel into what's going on for them through the language that they use or what they're Mm -hmm. talking about Um, and then I can start to guide them down with little breadcrumbs to where they might be feeling and what's Mm -hmm. going on and so they can start to notice it and be aware of it themselves Mm -hmm. Um, I think language is such a powerful tool to really as a coach, as you'll know, to really understand what people are saying about themselves, what loop they're in, what yep. um, 
what struggles they're seeing on a daily basis just based on how they're speaking uh, to themselves or how they're talking to me. So I will just use that as a thread, um, a little thread of light and try to find where that is. And then once we start getting into the nitty gritty, um, as you know, I'm a big fan of plant medicines um, and yeah, just going down that journey and letting it open up. But I do believe we've got a society of doing plant medicines, doing ayahuasca, doing psilocybin, doing all of these, um, these, these retreats and these ceremonies, but they haven't done a lot of the, the, the base work first. Right. So like they're just sort of hoping that the ayahuasca is going to open them up. And sometimes the plants aren't, they're already 10,000 steps ahead of you. So you're not going to be able to understand the messages that are coming through because you're not really, uh, you have the trauma to that conscious level to some degree. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's good to do a bit of the work first to have an understand and then go and do it because now we've got everyone doing them, uh, which is great in a sense. But sometimes I'm working with people that have really had traumatic experiences from the plant medicines because they've not been ready to understand what that means. And I can't explain it to them because I don't know what it means for them. So like it's, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And I, I think a, a big part of that from what I've observed is if you're not comfortable sitting in uncomfortable emotions, and that's what the plants need you to do in order to heal. That can be almost unbearable to someone. So like first starting with doing some personal development work, questioning mm. your thoughts, you know, possibly the work of Byron Katie, that's been very helpful to me. Um, and, and meditating and learning how it feels to just feel and not react, <laughs> you know, and not do anything about it, I think is really, really crucial. Cause yeah, I've, I, I have seen that before in medicine journeys where people are, um, like terrified of what they're feeling. Cause they're so mm -hmm. not used to allowing uncomfortable feelings, you know? So, and, okay. and on that note too, like I, I, it's like, I appreciate that ayahuasca has been so popularized, I guess, in a certain way, cause it's brought people, it's helped people be open-minded to psychedelic experiences. But I'm like, that's like, I, I told a client today that was asking me about it. I was like, that's like, you're going to go try out for your middle school basketball team and you're going to play against the NBA. It's just like, it's like the mothership. It's like, that's such a good analogy. That's <laughs> such a good analogy. It's like, what? Don't I'm, I'm going to quote that and, and put your name underneath. That's going to be great. Oh it's so God. true. I don't know if I would start there. Like, you know, it doesn't yeah. have to be crapping your pants yeah. and puking like from the gate. You know, it's like a lot. That's a yeah. deep, deep yeah. journey. Yeah. you know yeah. so like maybe start with something a little how about a micro you know <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and even just i know it sounds silly but sometimes opening up to just marijuana um right. and cannabis right. um to see and if you can sit with some of you know because a lot of time that used to invoke panic in me when i was younger because i wasn't able to sit with the uncontrol right. of not being in control anymore right. so marijuana was a really good part for me to understand that I can sit in this weird state that I'm in and feel all my physical sensations and be like not overstress that mm -hmm. but um Tara I really wanted to ask you as well um how did you learn to sit in the uncomfort I'm really like curious to what you did and um, Sorry, well, I'm, I'm not interviewing you now. I no, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate <laughs> it um uh you know it's interesting as much of my uh, first experiences with, uh, psychedelics was actually LSD. And that's a pretty, uh, trippy journey. You know what I mean? Like it can be all over the place and it, it, it kind of has that fractures your sense of reality for a minute. So that can be a very like scary place to be if you're, you know, new to it. And I remember when I was first doing those journeys, I wanted to talk. I wanted anything to like, not just be alone in my own mind space, music, something, mm. please, something, God, please distract me, you know? And, um, I, I recognized it. I was like, you don't like being alone in your own mind. Got it noted, you know? And after about a year of pretty consistent medicine journeys. I remember being with a group and I was like, I want to go be by myself, like in, in silence. Like I wanted to see what mm. the divine had coming through for me. I wanted to process. I wanted to be in that space. And so I think for me, honestly, it was just learning to meditate. You know, I had picked up a meditation practice, um, and using cannabis as well, like be just slowly allowing myself to get comfortable in that space 
eventually I got there, you know, um, now it's like, oh my gosh, please. Like, I can't wait for, I, I honor it. And I definitely don't do it as often anymore. I'm very intuitive about it, but, um, I think for me, it's like, I know that I'm about to get taught some really, really deep lessons from the divine. Mm. And so it's something I look forward to, but yeah, honestly, how about mm. you? How did you become comfortable with the loss of control mentally that you experience? Drug withdrawal. Mm. So, I mean, when I say drug withdrawal, I wasn't on any like, hard drugs like um, heroin or anything like that. It was more, I would say, harder drugs because it was they were pharmaceuticals. Mm. So I was on lots of diazepam and benzodiazepines um, because I had got them from a friend. And when I was bodybuilding, I was taking so many hormones to right. keep going. I needed to bring my sister down in the evening so I would have this relaxation. But now, in hindsight, I know why that was because um, I wasn't able to really sit with myself in for that period of time in the evening. So through the withdrawal of benzos, I, mean, I don't know if people have an understanding of what benzo withdrawal is like. It's, it's just probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever experienced. Um, I had to really learn to sit because you couldn't run from it. it what is it like? My teacher. Um, Oh, severe panic attacks. Um, you can have ecstasia where you're getting pain, chronic pain all through your body. You can wow. have chronic uh, depression and lots of people don't survive it. It's, a, it's, it's probably just as big as the opioid crisis now. Wow. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Jordan Peterson. Yeah. So he's going through the benzodiazepine withdrawal now. He was in a big like retreat hospitals and all sorts and nothing was helping him. And wow. I think benzos me off the, those the, my recreational use of them and then being addicted to them and then coming off them was my teacher that's what really taught me to be in the uncomfort taught me mm. to sit in the pain mm. and throughout the coming off of that and healing that and learning everything that I learned along it with the biohacking and the other aspects of emotional regulation um, I ended up doing a, a 10 day Vipassana uh, my first 10 day Vipassana, which was the most uncomfortable experience I've ever had in my life. Which is a silent retreat, if anybody's unfamiliar, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. 10 yeah. days of ten, silence. 10 day silence, 10 hours of meditation a day. Um, no talking, no eye contact, no writing, no reading. It's literally just you in your brain in solitary confinement for 10 days. And Oof, that was that was how I got to stick with my uncomfortable feelings because I got to a point where I was sitting in meditation I didn't even want to sit the next meditation because I was so scared of what was coming up because it was just kept coming kept coming kept coming kept coming it was like being in ceremony but in a more uh, physical reality from it so wow. it was really really powerful for me but I came out of it able to really sit still and be still. Yeah. You wrote something in a post I had clicked on and you said something about like, you still have feelings that come like uncomfortable feelings, you know, and you just learned instead of like fighting them or judging them, or why am I feeling like this and all of that, you just allow it, just sit through it, just allow it. And it made me think of something that I, so mushrooms are my favorites of all the medicines and especially in mm. nature. And there's, um, sometimes like I'll get these visions that are like, you know, my, I guess previously Christian programmed brain are like, these are, this is evil. This is dark. What are all these like serpents and weird things I'm seeing? And they look so sinister. And, um, I used to like judge it like that. I used to be like, dude, what's wrong with me? Why am I seeing this stuff? Am I like evil? <laughs> you have like all these mm. thoughts and mm. feelings. And I eventually learned to just sit back and smile and just say like, what is this teaching me? You know, and just, and actually just, just be in it, just be okay with it completely. Yeah. And it's so funny. Cause every time I do that in a journey, when it comes up, I'm just like, Hmm. And I just observe it. And it, and it, it like almost, almost instantly evolves into something beautiful. It's almost like the long, the more I reject it and the more I push it away, the, the more intense it gets, you know? And then when I just allow it, it'll just evolve and turn into something else, you know? So anyway, I appreciate it. Yeah. Beautiful. That's amazing that you've got to that point um, to be able to, to, to even notice you, you, you've obviously gone through a huge, huge journey yourself. 
Um, oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Looking forward to looking to. You so have to send me your previous podcast to to uh, to really look to listen to that. Yeah, no, yeah, I can. It's it's it makes you very grateful for the the difficulty. I heard like a spiritual teacher say one time that like in order to like break down the life that you've built and your ego, mm. like you literally have mm. to completely tear it down to shreds and rebuild it from your soul. And I, that's been my journey and I, I'm so grateful for it. You know, it was crazy. It was freaking crazy. A lot of healing needed, a lot, <laughs> a lot of help needed, you know, but I'm so grateful for it because I'm living a life purely from like the inside out, you know, instead of this outside mm. in, I need to be all these things in order to be successful, be enough, blah, 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 you know? Mm. So great for it. And I wanted to ask you too, cause I know, like, I know you do your gut, you help people with gut health. And so I definitely wanted to dive into this with you. Um, one thing that I've observed with gut health, I feel like is like, I'm always, it's kind of a chicken and the egg kind of thing. Um, when it comes to mm. chemical, the chemical effects, you know, of like having inflammation, having all these chemical issues with the gut, not being able to eat certain foods and things like that. And then the emotional issues that are causing the gut problems. Um, mm. for, for me, like an, ana I like analogies a lot. And so an analogy that I give my clients often is like, if I have a bunch of road rash on my arm and it's all torn up and I pour apple cider vinegar on it, it's going to freaking hurt. Right. But if I allow my skin to heal and then I pour apple cider vinegar, I can pour it on there all day long and it's going to be fine. And so I, the, I look at that as like the emotional healing and the physical healing, maybe giving your gut a break from the things that are bothering it, then you can hopefully get to a place where you can have those things, you know, and with you, my mind immediately goes to like the, you know, steroids to the prescription drugs, like causing all this gut inflammation, not to mention all the trauma that you experienced. Um, I'm curious mm -hmm. your thoughts on that, on like, you know, how much of gut issues are actually like mechanical and how much of them are trauma-based, you know, just want to hear your thoughts on, on the gut. Um, I'm probably going to be a bit out there with this. I'm probably going to say that I love 90%. It. 90% of the, who's the cat, by the way? Uh, this, so I am actually at my ex-husband's house right now because I just moved and <laughs> I don't have Wi-Fi and he and his wife are so generously letting me use their Wi-Fi and this is their yeah. cute little kitty, Jinxie. <laughs> he wants oh, to make an appearance. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome, Jinxie. Um, I guess I would say that 90% of the people I work with chronic gut conditions, um, especially through my study of microbiology, um, it's the more I've studied it, the more I understand that it's all a bit of a trauma response. Now, more so than you've still got that 10% that can be an environmental factor. But if we look at the environmental factors or the trauma response to why we're having these gut issues, why am I over consuming this food? Why am I overeating and consuming this sugar? And where are these deficiencies coming from? Why am I taking these drugs? Why am I taking these prescription meds? Where is this inflammation coming from? Most of the time they come from a response that's triggering us to do and act in ways that is not out of self-love or being able to, right. to work with that. But there is also the understanding that we, they don't have, there isn't an understanding. They don't have the knowledge based on what's good or bad because we've been brought up in a society to say that, this food, this packaged food is really good for you. And we don't need to eat organic foods and we don't need to do this. And we don't need to do that because it's being thrust upon you in a, in a, in a different manner from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So it's a very mixture of different things sort of all combined. Um, the more I work with people's emotional style and start to step out of their body's way and trust in their body's ability to heal, then everything starts to, starts to function. But we need to get the physical body in a good state first, a good vessel, a good strong vessel. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean physically strong as such, but it just means strong in the sense of health, vitality, optimalness, right? Then we can start looking at the emotional stuff. So the nervous system is got some strength behind it when you start tapping into that stuff. And then once the emotional shift comes in, the gut stuff starts just taking shifts quicker than like a Grand Prix driver. It's like super, super quick. Um, I really see the changes. And that was through my own journey from healing an incurable gut disease that I was gonna have to have a colostomy bag for the rest of my life. And oh, wow. I was told, 
I was told all these things and I actually saved my own gut from doing a fecal transplant. So a fecal microbial transplant, um, which I spoke about on my social media, like how does someone else's poop save you? And this is what st- took me down the microbiology path. Wow. Okay. So yeah, cause I, you know, I've, I, I've read about fecal transplants are actually really fascinating. I'm curious your thoughts on that because like immediately my mind went to like, Oh, it's like this mindset of like, I need someone else to save me, you know, like, um, somebody else, somebody else is better than me, healthier than me. Like their body can do it. Mine can't like, and you're saying like, you got to that place. So like, how'd you do it? Spill it. Yeah. Well, uh, (laughs) I don't know if you want to spill it, but, um, (laughs) so yeah, that's a really good way of looking at it as well. And I guess at that moment in time, I was in a place of victimhood. I was in a place where I needed someone else to help me because I didn't have trust in my Mm -hmm. blueprint. I didn't have trust in my path. I didn't have trust in those things, but maybe that was part of my path to do that. So now it helps hundreds and thousands of people. And we know that the fecal transplants where a lot of the microbiome studies now that have come out are from these fecal transplants saving people with schizophrenia and bipolar and chronic um, gut conditions and Crohn's disease and, and some really severe mental health conditions, which is important to add because people think of the gut as just those constipation, bloating and sort of severe skin issues, but actually mental health is the biggest thing that they're actually curing a lot with from these fecal transplants. So at that moment in time, I had this, uh, I'd had no microbiome diversity, none, like literally none. So um, I had a stool test done, I was working with a functional doctor and I had zero, like no good bacteria. And that was really un, like, I've looked at thousands of tests and I've never seen anything like my own that was back then. So um, I really looked into what can I do? How can I um, recover? I was extremely fatigued. Was, my mental health was shot. I was really low. I was really in a bad place. Skin issues, all sorts of things. And I looked into fecal transplants. And then I contacted a practitioner, which does it over here in Australia. And you're looking at 10 grand a pop. So 10,000 pounds just a pop, just to one peel. So I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I'm going to anyway. I sneakily went into their um, uh, their practice, uh, spoke to them about it, asked them what their um, how their their procedure was, their protocol. Took their protocol really, didn't take their protocol, just understood how they were doing it and what the mechanisms were and how they they got two people to match DNA wise and everything like that. Mm. Then um, my ex partner at the time. Um, she has like a stray, she has like a stray um, coffin nail stools. Like she's never had antibiotics, never been vaccinated, super healthy in the summer all the time. And we first tested and mine tested, uh, obviously already, and to see if they matched. Uh, they did match completely. Um, we done up our own mixture, which is a fun thing to do in the morning instead of a coffee. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, within the first enema that I did, I didn't do it for a pill film, I did enema. It didn't make sense for me that if you could, didn't have a functioning gut to go down that way through the stomach acid and into the small intestine, rather go up the colon way. So I went yeah. into the colon with an enema and within two days, my all my symptoms were gone. No way. Yeah, completely gone. And I, I, I couldn't even walk down the street without being fatigued and being dizzy. I had never really mind. Let of... somebody else help you. Never mind. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it was really powerful for me um, because oh. I I then and then had another stool test and all my gut issues were resolved. All my microbiome diversity was completely uh, flourished. Um, my gut lining started to seal. So my skin issues got better. My energy levels got better. My mental health got better. Um, and I think that was a really big part for me to know that actually the medical model is great. It saves lives. It's amazing. But there is also a way that we can do it ourselves. Um, and really, are we asking someone else to help us when really it's just store, it's microbiome. It's yeah. just bacteria. We're all bacteria. So right. it's really just a sharing you know, and if it, right. and if you want to share each other's poops and it's good, then you've got to do your fair share of research um, before doing it because you need to make wow. sure that you're 
you're matching in DNA and parasites, all sorts of different things. Okay. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That is incredible. Yeah. Like, and I, I also love that you're talking about the mental health stuff. I, I, one thing that like, I see it with every client and it pains me so much. And it's this, um, like, being mean to themselves, like beating themselves down for their poor mental state. <laughs> and mm. I'm like, Whoa, like where, hold on, let's go back to compassion, you know? Cause like, um, and there's also this huge lack of awareness on gut health and mental health. It is absolutely appalling to me how many people I meet who are on SSRIs and all sorts of medications and no one ever even asked about their gut health. Cause as soon as I know you're probably the same way, as soon as somebody starts telling me they have mental health issues, I'm like, how's your gut? It's like, I don't even need to ask them. You know, it's just like, I already know, mm. but I'm like, what are you experiencing? And they're like, Oh man, it's a freaking train wreck. And I'm trying all these different things. And I don't know what's going on. And it's like, the, the compassion needs to come in. Like when you don't have good gut health, you are just not going to have good mental health. Like mm -hmm. you can't like mindset that away. Like you don't have the neurotransmitters that you need to feel happy, to feel balanced, to get your racing thoughts to slow down, you know, and then it usually leads to drug addiction or at least like, you know, lots and lots of cannabis or something, at least something to just make it stop for a minute. And then they judge mm -hmm. themselves for that too. And it's like this, the judgment isn't needed. It is the compassion is needed and being curious about it. And like, where, so like, what do you think could be causing this? Not like you're just this weakling who's depressed and anxious all the time. Like that's, that needs to go that mentality, the judgment on mental health issues is blocking healing, you know, because mm. when that judgment is there, it's just like, well, what's wrong with you? And it's, there's this isolating thing that happens when people have mental health issues. And it's like, instead there needs to be this like leaning in of like, well, what's going on? You know, like how, what, how can we help? Like, you know, what are you experiencing? Okay. And getting curious about solutions. So I just appreciate that story so much. Cause it's like the fact that all of that went away in two days, for you, you know, like it just show it just shows like it's not like you had like mindset problems, you know, like that you just did not have their neurotransmitters and the you know you couldn't probably couldn't make butyrate because the bacteria weren't even there to break down mm -hmm. the f fibers and and make you know the chemicals for mental health, good mental health. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. that's thanks for sharing that. Um, oh no, no worries at all. I mean, uh, for anyone out there that's struggling with that, definitely look into fecal microbial yeah. transplants for yeah, sure definitely. And, um, there's lots of research out there it's unreal it's unbelievable one thing you touched on there with like you know the medications and um antidepressants and stuff you know we've got to remember that 90 percent of our serotonin is in our gut right we've got 70 percent of our immunity that is in our gut mm -hmm. um our GABA and dopamine and everything stems from our gut yep. but if the link between the gut and the brain aren't connected um polyvagal or vagus nerve is not connected and we're going to always struggle with that constant um the, the the phone line is disconnected basically right. and if the phone line is disconnected we need to reconnect it but we need to make sure the gut is reconnect is in a good place before we connect the brain to it mm -hmm. so again if that makes any mm -hmm. sense at all uh -huh. it's we there, we're, there's a lot of people talking about vagus nerve stimulation but you want to make sure that you're um, gut is in a good place before you start practicing vagal nerve stimulation. Right. Right. Yeah. Vagal nerve stimulation. I mean, I always just think trauma, 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 you know, just being in that mm. stress response so long, like the, Oh, you had another, um, it was like a reel or something. I was like, Oh my gosh. Cause I experienced this in a, in a medicine journey. I was taught this lesson so beautifully one time, but you were saying how your body is trying its freaking hardest. It's on your side. It's rooting for you with everything that it's got. And so like when that vagus nerve shuts down, it's just the body's like, you know what? he can't handle this. She can't handle all this stress. Like we got to shut this down or it's just going <laughs> to, they're going to blow. Like they can, literally can't handle it. It's just like a physical injury, you know, like it's so crazy to me, the mindset towards the body. It's like, Oh, my stupid shoulder or my stupid knee. And it's like, Oh no, no, you, they need help. Like they're trying to tell you that something's wrong. Or if you're inhibited somewhere, it's just trying to protect you. So you don't freaking rip your pec open when mm. you pull your arm back. It's, it's trying to help you. It's trying to protect you. The body is always trying to protect us. Even like, you know, shutting down and not being able to pr process trauma. It's just, it's trying to help us, you know? And so I think when we get in that mentality of like, Anytime something's wrong, it's just an alert, you know, anytime there's pain, it's just, it's an alert. It's like a, Hey, yeah, 
<laughs> we need some healing here, you know, whether that's mental and emotional or physical. So like being Completely. able to get, get back into that, that healing it's, it's, it's so <laughs> the longer I've been in coaching, I'm like, you guys don't need freaking training. You need healing. You need a lot of healing, so much healing before we ever can get into empowerment. You know, like that is part mm. of it. That's part of the process, you know, and mm. it's crazy how the mentality is kind of like, like be mean to yourself when you need it the most, you know, when you need help the most, the, what society has indoctrinated into us is like, be hard on yourself about your quote unquote shortcomings instead of being nurturing about it and loving about it and saying like, Hey, like giving yourself a break, like being your own best friend and saying like, dude, something's wrong. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I got you. I got you. I'm going to mm -hmm. help. You know, I tell my clients all the time. I'm like, ask your body what it needs. And it's mm -hmm. going to tell you right off the bat is it's, it's going to come right in your mind. And then it's up to you oh. as the soul in that body. If you're going to have the courage to make the changes necessary to do what it asks you, you know, and if not, yeah, you don't have to, but it's just delaying everything that you want, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, um, exactly. And I think what you are beautifully, what you said there, which really came through when you was uh, thinking about that is when we've got a physical symptom going on, ask the body, check in with the body and, and let the body tell you instead of making the body, the enemy, make the body your friend and understand mm -hmm. that it's always rooting for you. It's always working for you. But then if we've got emotional stuff, always ask the inner child. So what's going on? What's, what's going on emotionally? Because most emotions are from the child, right? So, or some point in that period. Um, so when we are feeling disconnected or not in alignment, then we have to ask our soul. So it's always about asking. So we do have all the answers. And just with you telling me that, then I was like, oh, that's a really good philosophy to think of that. Yeah. I, um, it, this kind of goes back to the, your post I saw about spiritual narcissism. And one thing that I'm very, <laughs> I just had a really powerful mushroom journey, like two weekends ago, um, here in Moab, Ooh, Utah, you still there. It. it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's like red rock everywhere. It looks like you're on Mars. It's so incredible. And it's, a, oh, like, I, saw, I saw your story of you, um, hiking up yeah. there the other week with a bunch of friends. Was that right? Yes, was that, that was right? it. That was that. Yeah. And, oh, um, wow. I had this moment, uh, I was just, I love, um, altars and nature. It's like a thing I've noticed. Like there's always like these big, huge boulders here in Utah. And they, I've noticed I'm like, they always have flowers going, growing around them. They're like literally like an altar. And I love to just lay on them and just like, see whatever comes in, you know, and just be, mm. and it's just always so teaching for me. And <laughs> one of the things during this past journey was I, started thinking about like gurus, like the energy of a guru. And I was like, <laughs> sorry guys, but I was just like, fuck gurus, fuck the guru. <laughs> like, I was like, I hate that energy, this energy of like coming at people, like they're so small and they know nothing. And I'm going to show you the way and like yeah. diminishing their like divinity within them. You know, I feel like a true, um, somebody who truly has the desire to help is always going to push you back into yourself and help you find those answers inside mm -hmm. of yourself and listen and respect, you know, like I respect what my clients are telling me about what they're experiencing. I'm, I'm it's sometimes I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, wow, cool. Thank you for sharing that with me. Like I learn and grow from it too, you know? And, um, I think like when it comes to healing, like I, I can't say enough, like it, the answers are inside of you. They are. And when you get to that place, it also builds so much self-confidence. Like you, you start to, you value, I still value other people's opinions very much. I'm like, that's cool. Like your whole life journey led you to that insight. Like, thanks for sharing that with me, but it doesn't trump my own. It's not like, oh, he knows the way Dr. So-and-so has the ticket and I just do whatever he says, even if it's not working for me, I'm just, he's right. I must be doing it wrong. It's like this, it's gaslighting. It's like this, like narcissistic weirdness, you know, and I'm so mm -hmm. done with that energy, especially in the health field, you know, I'm like, get the fuck out of mm -hmm. here with your like trying trampling on other people and like saying that you've got all the answers for them. Like, I don't like that energy, you know? And so I, I appreciate, like, I can tell that the work you're doing is like bringing people back inside of themselves, back inside, back inside, back inside, like what's going on, what happened, where did this start? You know? Mm -hmm. And that leads me, um, the, the other last thing that I wanted to ask you about was childhood wounds. Um, so I, so I've seen you post about that. Um, and like guilt wounds and trust wounds and abandonment wounds and neglect wounds, you know, and I appreciate it because so much of my client calls, it's just always like when, uh, this comes from the work of Byron Katie. I work with this lady who is amazing out here. Her name is Catherine Dixon and she facilitates the work of Byron Katie and, um, it's questioning your own belief 
like questioning your stories. Right. And so you go into a story like my mom didn't love me or my dad, you know, I wasn't enough for my dad or all these childhood things. And, um, one of the questions that she asked that I love so much is when was the youngest you remember feeling that way? When was the first time in your life as young as you can get that you remember feeling like that? And so I've definitely integrated that into my coaching. Cause it's, there's so much juice there, you know, it's like this, um, tree that grew in your psyche and it's got all these branches. So it's like in your relationships, you're doing this in your business, you're doing this. And you know, all these different areas because of this one big giant trunk of a wound that started mm. in, in your child's psyche and just it's branching out all over the place. So if you can rip that sucker out, like Catherine's wonderful. She's like, you know, just this, like, I could, she's like fairy godmother. My friend calls her the Oracle from the matrix. <laughs> like, and she's like, she'll go, she'll go, let's ask this bitch. <laughs> and I love it so much. You know, it's like, let's just ax it. You got to chop that sucker down. So yeah. anyway, I just wanted to get your thoughts on childhood wounds, you know, and how you lead people into this space of getting there, you know, what, what you have found, cause you're obviously working with this all the time. You know, what, what advice would you give somebody listening to like, kind of go back and examine some of those stories that started in childhood? Mm -hmm. I think um, it's very different for each person, Tara, you know, like it's, I know that's a really annoying answer, but it's so no. I really have to feel into um, how someone's wounds, if they've even noticed those wounds yet. Yeah. Sometimes they don't even notice the wounds, they're not even aware of them. So right. I can tell with addiction or maybe people that are overfeed, overfeeding themselves over calorie consumption sugar alcohol depending on if it's male female um, if their wounds are with their mother or their father you know if it's a father wound most men will gravitate towards porn um, towards um, alcohol towards sugar um, if it's a mother wound then there's a, a lot of women that are struggle with weight issues I've seen in practice struggle with a mother wound so because they're looking for that nurture, looking for that weakness of life from the milk that we first had. They're looking for that. So they will struggle with trying to regulate that sort of parts of them a lot of the time, mm -hmm. not always. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess the first thing before I even look at tra uh, trauma, sort of childhood wounds, I look at fight, flight, freeze, fawn responses, where they sit in those continuums, you know, are they a more fight type? Are they more a narcissistic type in individual, more aggressive, more controlling need to demand things from others and if that's not right they need to they they push them away and that sort of avoidant attachment that avoidant attachment style then you've got those flight types and if they're sort of workaholics always doing got to keep busy very over worrying perfectionist attitudes and the fauners those people pleasers the codependents have a hard time standing up for themselves and saying no and they can't set boundaries they avoid conflict they they give so much to the other person that the other person I don't even know who they are. They've given so much to them. And what you see through knowing these, and then obviously freeze response, disassociate, depressed, ADHD type symptoms, constantly binging and watching Netflix and just doing nothing. But that's a good thing as well. I do that a lot sometimes as well. It's good to just chill out and watch Netflix, right? So noticing where we are, fight, flight, freeze, fawn gives us an idea of where they've been living most of their life for a period of time. That also gives us an indication of where the wounds are, if it's mother or father, how they were treated through childhood, and also how their relationships are in their life. If you're a fawn type, you're normally in a relationship with a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And if you're a fight type and a narcissist, you're always in relationships with freeze fawns because you capture that as your victim, that becomes your victim. Now, narcissism is a really big thing in social media that gets really attacked quite a lot. But what we need to understand here is the fight to narcissism is a trauma response. It's just a very toxic trauma response. And it can really damage a lot of people and people that have been in narcissistic relationships are so damaging. But it is still a response. There is still extreme abandonment there. So we still need to understand that there's compassion for all aspects and all spectrums, fight, flight, freeze, and form. Then we can start to unpeel what's underneath those. Okay, so in your form, what is it? Is there, was your dad dealing with their own stuff? What was going on there? And is there, was there trust issues because 
um, abuse or um, being led somewhere that you was not safe anymore, going down those loads. So you can then look at those and then you can start to unpeel them and pull them out. I like to think of them like dirt under the rug. So some of the childhood runes are under the rug. We just need to sweep some of that stuff out so we can see the dirt before we sweep again. I know you like an analogy, so I tried to make that one up on the spot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then we start to delve into some of those um, to find out where um, their wounds are. So if it's abandonment, trust wounds. Um, most of the time you see trust and abandonment and guilt wounds are the three most popular that I see pretty much on a daily basis. Can you explain wounds. guilt wounds? Yeah. Um, so guilt wounds are... We lived in a household that if you wasn't doing things, maybe example for the family or this is family, family comes first. Mm. So you are going to need to do everything that we need to do. And if you don't do that, you're going to feel guilty for it. Right. So if you don't go to this class, you're a bad girl or a bad boy. Or if you don't do something for the family and come around for us, this will happen. Mm. That not always comes guilt always a narcissistic caregiver or two narcissistic caregivers so the, it, it can't come from that because it's not coming from a there's are coming from a fight response mm. so the only way that the child knows how to cope is they've tried all of them fight when they were younger when they're babies they scream they shout they tantrum they get shut down emotionally they probably go back up into their head become a very flight responder for a period of time, like trying to keep busy, but they can't flee the household because they're too young. So then if they're in a really bad narcissistic home or a fight response becomes a fawn. So they people please, they do as they told, they, they try to do everything they can for that, for their parent to make them happy, trying to fill in the holes of their bucket. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I, um, I, I never heard of fawn. I've heard flight uh, fight flight freeze and so I, I i saw that post that you put about that and i was like oh <laughs> that looks familiar i definitely definitely <laughs> have been doing a lot of active work in the last four or five years on overcoming the fawn definitely and it's just funny to watch because i mean it makes sense i mean codependent 101 but i i landed myself a nice narcissist after my divorce and it was this really toxic thing and i love what you said there about having compassion for even narcissism because that's really truly that lady Catherine Dixon I mentioned that's where she was able to get me because I you know typically when you're codependent or a fawn, fawn like you say um it's a blame blaming others it's like a really it, it was like oh well he was just this like manipulative jerk you know and so then then I don't have to do anything right I don't have to I was used mm. I was manipulated so I'm perfect just as I am and he's a bad guy right and so mm. having to go back in there and realize that well why you know, one of the things she helped me with so much was going through examples of times that I felt wrong about something in my gut, but did still did it anyway, because he wanted me to like the people pleasing. Right. And, mm. and she said, um, you know, she's like, so did you want to do that? And I was like, no. And she's like, well, why didn't you tell him that? And I'm like, Ugh. and she's like, so you lied to him. So you were dishonest with him. And I was like, oh shit, turning yeah. the table around. She, she, you sound, know? she sounds like my kind of woman. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I was like, oh, you know, and I had, I, it was a beautiful process. Um, And it got me to the place that I was able to realize that it was my own woundedness that brought me into that relationship. And it was his woundedness that brought him there. And when mm. you can have passion on yourself for your own woundedness and these behaviors that don't serve you, you can have that for them too. You know, finally I was able to get mm. there because I was like, I think he's evil or some people just like possessed by demons. He's like evil. He's like bad intentions. He's horrible. You know, that's where I was at. And um, when I had, when I had that compassion for myself, I was just like, Oh man, like I, I wish you the best. Like, I wish you all the healing. Like, I'm sorry. That sucks. Like you're the way you operate in life is bringing you so much like uh, stress and sadness and broken relationships. And, you know, so mm. it's cool to go through that healing process for yourself. Cause like, it's just your mode of operation. When you have compassion on self, you, you, you have that for others too. It's just this reflection that comes out. So I appreciate you sharing Completely. that. No, that's, um, that's fine. And thank you for sharing. Also, the thing I would say for anyone listening that is noticing themselves in a form response or 
they're trying to be a fight uh, or they're, they're in a relationship and they're seeing this continual pattern emerging of being in relationships with avoidant uh, male or females um, and they're always um, in fight relationships with a fight so a narcissistic I would always just check in with yourself and go what is my soul trying to heal here from my past Love what that. is that what is that that you're trying to heal because you was only in relationships with narcissists because you was trying to heal a past wound yeah. with a caver and he's in a relationship with you because he had abandonment issues so he was trying to get the love that he didn't get from someone in his yeah. in his most likely um, yeah so I love just that. check in with ourselves and ask that yeah, I love that perspective because I also had to process so much guilt and shame. Like, why would I be in a relationship like that? What's wrong with me? I can't believe I listen to everything. Blah, blah. You know, and I was in all this guilt and shame. Ayahuasca actually really helped me with that one. Um, I bet it breath, did. And breath work too. Um, even just doing holotropic breath work was very emotionally processing for me in that. But mm. um, I, I, I call that time of my life my body slam from the universe. I'm like, thank you. I, I see it now. Like, I was great for it because if I had just like entered a relationship with this like mild mild you know controlling guy I might still be in it you know so I was grateful Mm. that it was as severe as it was because it was like oh (laughs) I got some work to do I got some healing to do here you know so I love that perspective of just like looking at it like what am I trying to heal like what what is this teaching me instead of like for Mm. me it was like shaming myself for being in it you know so Mm -hmm. and the guilt wound yeah yeah Yep. Then the guilt wound, like I'm bad for being in this relationship. Yep. Yep. That comes up. Yeah. Good point. Thank you. Um, I question for you. I, do you work with people outside of Australia? Do you work remotely with people? Yeah. So I have a a clinic uh, in my town here and then I also work pretty much 80, 90% all online all over. Okay. Okay. All yeah, right. So, I um, I know your Instagram is Ryan Rose Evans, right? That's mm-hmm. all spelled mm-hmm. normally guys. And then, yeah. um, and then your website is Ryan holistic coaching.com. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Any, anywhere, any other things you'd like to tell them about or like what, what the experience is like working with you? Is it just talking, you know, like how, do, how does that go? Yeah. So, um, I appreciate the question. Um, yeah, so the way that I've, I've just developed a sort of new program that was naturally happening anyway, I used to do something called the inner work and I used to do a gut reset and detox pathways and functional health stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I found that the more I was doing the gut reset and the functional stuff, that actually what was going on was um, we was going through the emotional stuff anyway. So yeah. because by the time they would start and they start seeing results, they would sabotage a lot of the time. So I'll be then go, okay, so where's this sabotage coming from? And then before you know it, Pandora's box is open. <laughs> so I guess I combine the physical health for the very first part, just to get the body like we were talking about earlier, get it in a prime mm-hmm. state or in a better state than it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we go into the more emotional stuff. And I'm really guided by my clients. They're my teachers. That's who I learn from. I can resonate with what you're talking about learning from your clients and I really do learn from them. I've learned from every single one. And the only way we can get to empowerment is through embodiment. And we have to understand what's going on, feel it in our body before we can empower out of that. So I guess the process is about empowering them, and becoming their own healers, becoming their own doctors, becoming their own practitioners, becoming their own therapists, and starting to understand that we don't need the gurus fuck the gurus you know so <laughs> please quote that soon <laughs> you'll see it you'll see a post coming up and people will be like whoa yeah. damn tara <laughs> do you feel yeah, strongly so, about that <laughs> yeah. well it's true right it's true um mm-hmm. but people you know you actually i could go into detail about that but um yeah it's a beautiful process i love it i love what i do um i don't charge exuberant amounts of money because I, I live very minimally and I, I love it. So I uh, it and just um, really nice to be able to offer that to people. And it's ever evolving because I'm evolving. I don't know all the yeah. answers. I don't pretend I do either. Yeah, I saw in your bio, it said something like sharing what I've learned so far or something like that. Yeah, I love mm-hmm. that. You know, that's all we're mm-hmm. ever doing. And it's the best place to be as a coach and a leader for sure. 
So mm. um, thank you so much for spending time oh, with thank us you today so much. sharing your message and uh, just appreciate all that you're doing. Mm, I appreciate it, Tara. Thank you. I love your energy. So nice to uh, connect with you. Thank you.